What's up, my beautiful congregation? It is I, the prophet of the gaming gods, here for another sermon, and boy, do I have a doozy for you. As you know, my duty is that I've been called of the gaming gods, me, Moro the Father, Kojimi the Son, and Carmack the Holy Ghost, to restore the one true gaming podcast and become the prophet, the one true gaming gospel. In reality, what that boils down to is I'm in charge. Whatever I say goes. If you think anything contrary to what I say, you're wrong because I speak for God. So turn your brain off, sit back, and listen. And because I have been commissioned by the gods to interview creative and interesting people about their favorite gaming memories growing up. And boy, do I have someone creative and interesting today. Drum roll, please. <laughs> With the bugging snakes of Russia, a.k.a. Joseph. Ooh, shit. What's his last name? I think it's Campbell, like the author behind like the hero's journey. They're both geniuses, so it wouldn't surprise me if his name is Joseph Campbell. Um, I'm checking his social profiles. His bio about, ooh, oh, his bio just says death beats. Fuck. Why you gotta be so mysterious? Why you gotta be such an artiste, bro? He's mysterious because he's a motherfucking level seven tech romancer. This dude, ha- he- he's communicating with something. Like he might be talking to Gog and Magog or some buffon type entity on the other side of the astral realm. I don't know what he's channeling, but uh, Death Beats is, uh, yeah, 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 it's, uh, I can see that. But when you think Death Beats, I would assume most people would conjure up some sort of That's not what it is. His beats are more like ambient, dark, cinematic. It's uh, like Blade Runner mixed with... Trent Reznor. Blade Runner and Trent Reznor? Sign me up. Anyway, uh, I have been nerding out on this dude for a hot minute. For warning, we talk a lot about music for the first hour. If you want to skip straight to the juicy video game parts, you can skip to about 53 minutes. I got you, bae. I got you. If you're not into music, shit. I get it. Skip ahead to 53 minutes. But I urge you maybe take a listen because Homeboy is a master of his craft and it's cool to listen to someone talk about their craft when they're a master. And instead of doing my usual intro, I'm going to give you a little sneak peek of one of his tracks my favorite track carried to California in a swarm of bees and I was just gonna play the track but then I started getting a little drinksy drinksky and a little tipsy tipsky maybe I had a little (laughs) puffsky puffsky and I decided to just I don't know why I've never rapped before rap over his beat to give him an intro so without further ado gaming memories pod x snakes of Russia the hottest beat you're gonna hear in all of 2021 bitches Motherfucking gaming men's pod. Snakes of Russia. I'm like the motherfucking gaming god. Quake and suffer. He's like the motherfucking reigning prod. Cakes and buffers. Check this fucker out on social media. Snakes of Russia. Dude, I just have to get this out of the way right now. I know you are a normal guy, and I know you're not like a famous person, but I'm a weird music head, mm-hmm. and I feel like I'm fanboying out right now. So, so if Ugh. I'm weird, you got you got to give me like a little, a little, a little. You got to give me a freebie because. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so just for a background, I mm-hmm. had a guy on named Levitate who makes similar music, and we ended up talking about Lorne for 80% of the time and video <laughs> games for 20% of the time. That's, that's hilarious. And so I've been worshiping Lorne for a long, a long time. I really like that guy, and I cool. like his music, and I like his sound design a lot. And that is slowly and, – and long story short, that led me to you. My brother actually messaged me, and he's like, you got to listen to this guy, Snakes of Russia – I remember I was on my way driving to jujitsu and I skipped the whole class because I sat in the parking lot (laughs) like one more fucking song like and I ended up listening to like 45 minutes and was like well no more class oh well at least I found a new guy I like wow man that's awesome I kind of feel guilty a little bit but but that's that's all I mean what if that day there was like an awesome move that you didn't you know, learn, yeah. and it was because of me. It'll be but... another day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but that's awesome. Thank you very much. That song yeah. carried something carried to California in a swarm, a bee of swarms, or something like a that. Swarm of bees. Yeah, yeah. Swarm of bees. Now that's my jujitsu song. I listen on the way there, and then that's even though it's slow and ambient, it's so 
Mm-hmm. I feel like I'm like a dark god entering, and like no one can withstand my power. <laughs> like, it's awesome. Man, that's uh, that's great to hear. That like I I love hearing the way people interpret. That's the thing about instrumental music is you can interpret it any way you want, and I think that's why I like making it so much because for you that's that, and then for somebody else it's a completely different vibe and a different feeling. Yeah. But that's I I love hearing stories like that, man. They make my day. So that's very cool. Thank you. The first time I heard it, it was. Actually, actually more psychedelic experience where it felt similar i'm super i swear i'm super open about shit on this podcast so you can say whatever you want okay i I fasted for six days and then took two tabs of acid whoa (laughs) and the first time i listened to that song but i took two tabs of acid long story short i like communed with the spider god and it showed me like the beauty of the underworld how it's not dark dark things aren't dark they're actually just part of the whole ecosystem Right, and it yeah, was like yeah. spiders and moths and and skeletons, and it, but it was like beautiful. Uh-huh. Um, it when I heard first heard uh, the carry me to California in a swarm of bees, it kind of felt like that a little bit. Wow, like this is dark, but it's actually. I don't know. It's just that it felt similar. I don't even like, you can't describe a psychedelic experience. It's just all I can say is it kind of made me feel the same way that made me feel. Do you do that? Do you do that often? The the psychedelics? Uh, I just did three rounds of DMT last weekend. Okay. Yeah. I, yeah. I, all right. Yeah. I, I'm, <laughs> that's, um, that's where I'm at. That's just, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. Where I'm at. I you know I've I've had some pretty life changing experiences on psychedelics as well. I think they could they're 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 such great medicine you know they really are because they help you unlock some stuff that said it's like I, the last couple times that i have i've my, i've went to like a really really crazy dark place so i haven't been doing any in a, in a long time like a few years mostly because I, I need to i need to get back to that place where it's like a little more positive like it, it was re- it's they've been really weird experiences the last couple times but i'm a big 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 believer in the powers of of psychedelic man they're just they're just yeah. they're amazing yeah i mean honestly that's a common pattern i've run into myself not with psychedelics yet and when i said i did dmt last weekend it's not that i do it that just happened to be a 10-year right. goal to get dmt occurred last weekend it's not like right. Right. doing right. dmt this if people who do psychedelics yeah you don't i saw i have shrooms that have been sitting in my drawer for like nine months because it's just not time to take them sure you know what i mean yeah, yeah, it's yeah, just yeah, not that but this pattern of hey i've it, over time, I ended up having some negative experiences where in the beginning, they were usually positive. I've seen that happen with a lot of people, friends and family, where it's like, yeah, I don't know, for the last little bit, every time I did a psychedelic, it was like really bad, really dark. Yeah. And um, I, that can happen. I've been mm-hmm. always afraid of that. And I've had moments where it was like kind of bad. But the worst experience I've ever had in my life is edible marijuana. I, people <laughs> act like marijuana is like, you smoke weed and get them. But no, marijuana is a demon. You got to be careful with that yeah. shit. I, I, dude, well, yeah, I've got a great, 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 great story about <laughs> about, about that. If, if, if you want to hear it. Um, I do. Yes, I do. For, first of all, well, I think I think to all to speak at all of these things, I think they're merely kind of just an amateur amplifier really yeah so it's kind of like whatever vibe you have going on in your in general Mm -hmm. like 80 90 percent of the time it's only gonna kind of bring that to the surface so and then especially with psychedelics it kind of it kind of goes a really deeper than that. So like with alcohol, let's say like if you're an angry person, most of the time angry people drink, they become angrier, you know? And like, and like yes. if you're a lovable person, like, you know, when I drink, I just hug people. Um, so Dude, it's kind I'm of the like, same way. Yeah. I become annoying <laughs> with compliments. Like, yes. Shut up. Stop yes. complimenting. <laughs> same. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I just think they're just kind of amplifiers. So I think there's a lot of truth in what you're saying. Like it's not time, you know, because I know yeah. that, that like if I go, you know, like I think about ayahuasca and stuff like that, and how amazing that would be but i i gotta warm back up you know because if i go you know it's gonna unlock some stuff so but anyway yeah so that's kind of the way i I interpret you know the psychedelics and stuff or any real drug is just kind of an amplifier of what's going on but um to speak about just marijuana in general um years ago i worked at a um at a nightclub and i remember that it was the night before a holiday and somebody gave me they gave me a pop brownie and they told me what it was and i don't i just don't smoke a lot of weed not that like i actually really like it but sometimes it just makes me so paranoid it's unbelievable Mm. and it's certain strains like certain strains will be the best time I've ever had and certain strains are just, I just want to eat all the pizza and certain strains is just like, it's, I'm just a mess. So I really need to be more scientific about it. But at this time I was definitely in like 
the every time I do pot, I'm a mess category. Um, so I remember going home that night and just and just um, <laughs> and and, ta- and like like eating the entire brownie. So um, and for some reason, <laughs> like I don't I like and then and I know then, where this is going. Right. So then. Yeah. So but what makes this story better is a few days previous. So I said this was like on a holiday weekend. So on that Friday, I, I was doing this label at the time and and I had and I had this shipment of CDs come on a Friday that I needed for Tuesday, but they got delivered to the wrong address. So I basically spent the weekend trying to figure out where they belong and I found out where they belonged. And my plan was, was that early this next morning, I was going to go to that place, which was this plumbing supply company and like ask for my box of CDs. So then I, I, I took this brownie and I, and I, and I was watching something for like an hour and I'm like, oh man, this, this is, this sucks. Not even doing anything. And then I went to sleep <laughs> and then when my, <laughs> alarm went off because I needed to wake up early to go see if these CDs were there. You were fucked city for sure. Dude, I was sizzling. It was it was like <laughs> it was so I had never been that high in my life. And then I had to go down to this plumbing supply company, which thankfully was like a block from my house. So I walked and I went in there and I actually went <laughs> on the other side of the counter. So I was I was where the employees usually are. I was asking a customer if they had seen where my package was. <laughs> so so long story short, they had the package. It was great. I went home. It, I was high for like like all day but it was a yeah. me- it was crazy dude yeah those pop brownies that was a really long story to just say that those pop brownies are no joke man it's crazy they are no joke especially the edible form uh, people just you gotta you cannot underestimate that i've had i've never told this story on the podcast uh make it short because i want to get to drilling your brain about music and stuff yeah um I accidentally, at that same jujitsu club, dropped a vial of like a pen, picked it up, put it back in my car, and it spilled all down my arm. So I was driving. And I, I had this thought, well, if you eat dry marijuana flour, it doesn't make you high. That's why you have to bake it in a brownie. There's something about, I forget the exact mechanical process, like in the, the chemicals, why it doesn't work and why you have to bake them. And I just I thought that that would have also applied to oil because you have to vape it, like you have to smoke mm-hmm. it. But it doesn't. And I it was, I, I basically, li- I was like driving, I'm like, oh, gosh, it's everywhere. And I was just like <laughs> driving and I just like licked it all up and like cleaned myself up while I was driving. And then my wife takes off. I have my kids. I have two little kids home alone. And uh, I start getting really high. And I'm like, hmm, that's weird. I haven't smoked since before jujitsu and I worked out super hard. But I should be stone cold sober. I worked out mm-hmm. way hard, took a cold shower. Why am I so high? And I kept getting higher, and I started freestyling. We were cleaning the house, and I was, like, rapping over music. And I'm like, dude, I feel weird. And then it dawned on me, oh, no, that oil, it's, like, working. Right. And I started thinking, like, that was a 1,000 milligram cart, and I spilled more than half of it, and I licked up, like, 80% of that. So I'm sitting around, like, three to 400 milligrams. And I've had really bad edible, like, I'm a pothead, I've been smoking pot, like, I've had lots of paranoid trips. I'm like, I know I've been down that road so many times and I know yeah. I, I, usually I just go run. I just go run until it goes away. Yeah. Really? Um, yeah. Just run wow. it off. Just, wow. just get out and run. But I can't run because I have two little kids at home. My wife's right. gone. I'm like, dude, I'm like, I know. Okay. I know like your story and how long it lasts. I'm thinking like, man, I'm going to get high for like four hours. Then I'm going to peak for like three and then I'm going to come <laughs> down for four. Like this, I'm in for a, like, this is going to be bad. I call my wife, babe, you got to come home. She's like, no, I'm out with my friends. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, <laughs> like I'm going to have a mental breakdown. I'm going to cry. And then I'm probably going to pass out. Like this is, this is how these things go. Right. She's like, I'm not coming home. Like I'm too far away. I'm in Salt Lake, which is like the closest big city. She's mm-hmm. with her friends, and she's like, Han- like handle your shit. It's like, okay. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> Long story. I, ha- I did have a men- like a breakdown. I cried over the beauty of my children, but I also had this experience where, in like, kind of in my mind's eye, where this giant ball of love and understanding, like, like the size of the sun, came down. And it was like, oh, all that love you feel for your kids? Like, that's like a speck of sand compared to what I am. Right, and then right. uh, it's... It started to like take me with it. This is all just marijuana. Like people right. think this, this is not a, yeah. a psychedelic drug. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, right. it's not a traditional. Sure. And it started ta- started taking me like I was I was going to be taken to like the next realm to merge with the the everything. Uh-huh. And uh, I was like, no, I'm not ready. Like I don't I don't want that. And then and this it didn't say it, but it communicated it to me. I know you're not ready, but you needed to know you weren't ready. Wow. That's heavy. And then it put me back down. And this is, this is what I try to tell people. And they're like, I want to, like, my wife wants to try pot brownies with pain, whatever. Someone maybe was religious. I'm like, no, no, no. Okay. 
you can do it. But like, you gotta understand, pot brownies. You people put psychedelics and mushrooms. Like, oh, they're up here in this crazy heavy. Yeah. But I, I'll go just like willy nilly take some pot brownies. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, man, yeah. You guys can't. You yeah, gotta be man. careful. You gotta yeah. be careful. Yeah. yeah. When somebody says you should only take half of this, then I like take, I take half, half of, that. of what they tell me. Yeah. Yes. Because I'm just like, well, you clearly don't know me uh, when I'm stoned. Yeah. So. Yeah. I see some tape machines in your background. Are those decorations? Or are those the ones you're using no. to run sound? Um, yeah, they they all work. They all um, yeah. There's 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 two uh, quarter inch machines, and then there's a space echo there. So yeah, I use I use all three of those constantly. Uh, there's almost like almost everything at some point hits one of those machines, um, and then gets dumped back into Ableton, and then and then I'm my mastering guy actually he masters to tape too like. Per okay. my request, yeah. That was going to be one of the questions I asked. So, mm-hmm. are you mainly working in the box, going out through tape, and then or different units and going back in, or are you using out of box since going through your tape and stuff, and then going into Ableton? But like a combination, probably of all those things, because I'm I'm definitely not an elitist when it comes to hardware, software. I mean, it all just whatever ends up sounding great in the end. Um, so. That said, I, I use a lot of hardware, um, but I also use just the same amount of plugins and stuff. And there's, and there's different, there's, there's plugins that are just fantastic and they'll never be able to, like, there's stuff that I'll never be able to afford if it were an actual the hardware were, version. Like, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I'm kind of a, a hybrid of both of those things. I tend to start out with like just kind of having to play with the modular synth and then I, I kind of get like loops together and then record those and then bring those into Ableton and then kind of put them in a folder and I'll spend, I don't know, like a day or two doing stuff like that so that when I want to work on something, I can just go to that folder. So it's almost like I'm I'm putting the the process into like two different categories. So there's like this this time where I'm just kind of making sounds and doing some sound design and then it gets put into this folder and then from that folder I usually actually start a writing session going to that folder and then just first like and then that kind of sparks an idea so it's kind of like a, a you know a bunch of my own samples and loops and sound design that I'm pulling from at a later date that makes a lot of sense because my, my creative process like so before I did all this I I produced I did like a record label I tried to did like 10 years like touring and stuff and trying to make it. And I did, I, ma- I paid my bills for a while. Cool. And uh, it was cool. But then I was like, if I put the same amount of energy into ma- the internet, I think I'm going to have a lot more freedom. And I did. Right. It worked out. It was worked yeah. out great. And now I like do music all the time and I don't even necessarily release it. I just, whatever. Yeah. It doesn't matter at this point. Um, but so I wanted to, so for those listening, this is why I'm probably going to be super nerdy about some music shit. We'll get to the video games. I promise. Um, I would build like you're building. So a lot of people work in audio. They're like, Sam, you're basically building like your own sample packs. So you're yeah. putting songs together like traditionally, but you're just sampling yourself, which is uh, awesome. Es- yeah. Essentially it's, it's to more just to create a palette because it's, it's kind of like within electronic music, part of the thing that I love so much about it is that, you know, I grew up playing in rock bands, probably like most of us. And mm-hmm. it's, um, I played drums for a while and then I sang and fronted bands, but with a traditional rock band at the time, it was, you know, in high school, it was guitar, bass, drums, vocals, and those are your four instruments. And then as your palette expands, you know gets bigger you learn about bands that take those four instruments and can make such great creative stuff with that um and then you know with guitar pedals and everything and then your 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 palette just kind of grows and grows but with electronic music it's like there's no there's no possibility like there's i'm I'm sorry there's no it's infinite possibility there's no there's no limits so um sound design is like such as important as the the start the song structure itself and um and everything else. But that said, like, I do really have kind of a, a firm belief in song structure and, and taking people places and take them on a journey and stuff. I get, cause I get bored with things after three minutes. So it's kind of like, I, I can't imagine how a listener would, would feel, you know, if they don't want to hear like the eight minute version of that song, or maybe they do. Who knows? I don't know. Um, but I guess my point here is that, is that because sound design is such a huge part of the process for me and for probably most electronic music, Positions, that I feel like if I have a, a, a palette of stuff to reach for instantly, um, that it just helps me kind of just be creative as fast as possible. So when you're when you're sampling your palette, 
-hmm. when you put it into the folder, you're just putting like the project file or are you printing to audio and just printing having that to audio, audio. printing so, to audio yeah okay so you yeah. starting out with the set you don't even mess, mess necessarily remember the settings you had that made that audio thing my things might all be different right there they'll probably be different <laughs> they'll, they'll especially with the modular because that's um i mean i i pull out the i pull out the patch cables and that's just gone so like you had to record it so that, that I mean, don't get me wrong. Like, there's times then, like I'll make, I'll take, I'll take those loops um, that I made and pull from one and be like, oh, this is cool. I mean, this is, this is a vibe. And then I'll start working on that, and then I'll completely go to one of the hardware synths and make something new just for that thing that goes okay. right in that session. Yeah. So it's not all me taking from my own kind of folder of ideas, but the, that folder of ideas is is instrumental in helping me start an idea like it's kind of like every single time i go to write i go through that folder and be like oh i remember this loop this is cool and then i'll start that way yeah is there times the reason i was asking is i can mm -hmm. foresee a time possibly where you you bring in an idea you mm -hmm. start messing with the, whatever came from the modular and you start mm -hmm. working on working on the idea and you're like actually i can make this sit just a little bit more perfect but I would have to tweak it what's not a possible because I already printed the audio and now I don't remember this patch and I can't get it to – or are you always able to manipulate it, the audio print in a way that you never run I see into what, a, a I see what you're saying. Like, yeah. Um, I, think, I think there's something to be said about printing audio and moving on because if you have just MIDI and you can tweak that all day, you'll tweak it all day and it'll never be good. <laughs> so there's something to be said about using a hardware synth, run through a tape machine, through a space echo or something like that, and just print it and that's it. And then, of yes. course, you can – and then that's where like the software and the plugins come in because if I want to manipulate it further, I can in Ableton change pitch and change the speed and stuff yeah. like that. Um, but th there's very few times where I have, I mean, and that started out as my limitation because like most of us, we all started on computers that were way too slow. So we had to print, like we had to print everything. And then as the yeah. OS, <laughs> as, as we try to keep up with Apple and their OSs, um, your, your computer just gets slower over time. So it's kind of started out of necessity to print stuff, but I think it's a really good practice that works that works for for me anyway, just to kind of like print, move on, and then don't flounder on that decision that already sounds great. The exception would be for my my quote unquote day job. I do I do a lot of music for like ads and and trailers and film and TV and stuff. Now that stuff I have to keep as MIDI as long as possible because the key and the tempo and everything is is always changing. So yes, that makes total I, I don't, sense. Yeah, I don't print that stuff um, to MIDI. I'm sorry, I don't print the MIDI on that stuff till like very very late in the process. But my own stuff, like I, I just like to. Just print it and move on and just kind of, you know, yeah, it's kind of a cool way to work because it's it's just, you know, it's just kind of gets you to make decisions. And I believe in making decisions because otherwise you just never release anything, you know. <laughs> this is so I'm laughing. This is so perfect. Remember, I told you my brother showed me you. My brother, mm -hmm. in my opinion, is a legitimate savant. He, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm not just saying that to like pump his nuts. Like <laughs> he's, he's different. Like his, he, he's a. Uh, but he's and he's way better than me at producing music. And he is mm. a he's a job. He's a professional audio engineer. He does front cool. of house sound for live right. shit, and he's really good at it. And he manages like live streaming too. So like they'll be printing to a live version that's streaming, and he does cool. that mix as well as the. He's very good, but he also right. produces music at home, and he's in the dark. I guess we, I would say your genre. By the way, mm -hmm. I don't know what I call your genre or Lauren, but from you and then looking into into uh, I, somehow from you, I found. Trees and Cyborgs, like a record yeah. label? Yeah. Are you mm -hmm. right? And yeah. they call it post-genre. Wow, that's cool. The genre. Yeah, yeah. How would you label your music? I never know when people ask. Um, <laughs> like, And that's like kind of an issue because if you like, if you try to submit your music for anything whatsoever, they always want you to add a, a genre. And like, I just never know what to put because it's not, well, it's not you know it's it's not techno it's not high, it's not it's down tempo but it's not you know it's not really bass music but maybe it is so i don't i don't know when i tell people if i if i met someone on the street i'd say i just make dark music and it with beats like and it's yeah, you know that is the best like, way to say dark it. Sl dark slow jams you know that yeah. that's kind of um that's it and and it's interesting i always kind of like to hear other people describe it to me because everybody has kind of a different description um and 
And so, and it's great. It's interesting to hear the the description. But for me, I don't know. I just kind of describe it that way. I because I, we've all done that so many times. But I think it's actually like I think you need to describe it in some way because you need to get someone's interest peaked. Because if you yes. just say, oh, it's just it's just dark, you know. I mean, that, that could be anything. I could be. That it could, could be, be like you know. It could be like so many records. Um. So I think if 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 I say, yeah, it's dark. It's 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 ele- dark electronic music. Um. Kind of cinematic at times. A little dissonant. Yes. And um. Just you know heavy on the beats so that's that's kind of where i end up and and i don't really what's what's great is when i find out about new genres that i had no idea existed um and then people suggest that and then i'm you know like i heard what did i I heard one today what was it it was man it was there's so many like blank waves now so there's like you know there's like Oh yeah, uh, I know what you, you mean. know, like dark wave, synth wave, and there's oh, there's like a new one every day, you know, vapor wave, wave, just wave, you know. Um, but I can't remember this one I heard today, but it was classic. I'm like, how is that a thing? You know, like I don't really have a hard and fast for for the the name, and maybe that's good. I don't know, maybe that's good that I that I can't really pigeonhole it or, or pin you, you, you know and say oh yeah i make you know all the it's it's techno or it's every i do know this that it all hovers around the same bpm and it's all kind of you know so if that's a, a characteristic then you can kind of lump it into that you know so it's definitely that's why i asked about post genre because i think mm-hmm. you had a release with them and so this this trees and cyborgs mm-hmm. and i started going through stuff that they were promoting i'm like oh Okay, this is because I've always had a hard time finding sort of finding something that scratches the the itch yeah, that you're sure. able to scratch. Cool. Um, and they they call it post genre, mm-hmm. which is I'm like, okay, well, if that's you, if that has utility, if that has purpose, and I can use this label to yeah. go find more dope shit, then I'm all for it. Yeah, like you know, that's the point of a label is for there's a utility to it as well. Absolutely. Like, yeah, like it's good that you don't fit one easy, but at the same time, it's hard to communicate and get that out there if there isn't at least a word that like, the public lexicon has sort of like come up with that that can work. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I, I've kind of always kind of always managed to be involved in bands um, and, and projects that have just not really fit right down the middle of one thing. Because <laughs> you're know? an artist, like a real artist. <laughs> <laughs> but, but most of the time it's been like, yeah, you know, like I traditionally played and I fronted like heavy bands and we were like heavy, but we weren't metal. But, you know, it was bluesy, but it wasn't blues rock. It was just kind of like this amalgamation of different things. But the problem with that was, was it's just like you never, you don't have a, a place to go. And, you, and like bills are weird because it's like, you know, you know, you always want to be the heaviest band on the bill, I guess. But then if you're with a, bu- a bunch of death metal bands, it's not going to work. So it's kind of like that whole being on the outside and on the fringe thing, it really bothered me for so many years but with this thing i just said you know fuck it this is the music that i enjoy making so i'm gonna make it and the fact that people connect with it is just is, is like the coolest thing in the world to me so i like people can if they if you want to call it ska you can you can if but if you <laughs> dig it if you dig it then it, you know it's just dark very slow ska yeah. then yeah. that's cool fourth wave ska um fifth wave there's wave again yeah yeah so anyway i was uh saying my, i brought my brother up you were talking about how you have to print the tape and it's good yeah. and creative and you'll tweak knobs all day that's my brother's problem he's, he's like too smart and he, he can't he can't finish anything and we've had right. had this discussion with him and the reason why i was laughing is he showed me you and he worships he was like dude this guy snakes of russia is so badass and to hear you say what he needs to hear it's like that guy you love snakes of russia he says you can't tweak knobs all day either <laughs> god um, damn it Man, it's it's like I did another podcast recently, um, and I talked about this this thing. This this it's like a it's like a phenomenon for me that the finishing of stuff. Like it's a, it's an issue that a lot of artists face, and um, yes, and that was definitely. me for years too. I I was the same thing. Um, like I just couldn't finish anything, and it's it's not it's not always based in fear. It's it's oh it's it's more out of the thinking that nah, this isn't the best thing I can do. I can probably yes. do better, but there's a point which is true you can always do better oh always you can always do better and and stuff isn't finished ever it's like you can always you can always tweak anything ad nauseum until until it just sucks the life out of it but there's a point that like this this whole project for me was was the whole experiment of me just like you know what i like this there's probably going to be someone out there else out there that likes this so i'm just going to put this out into the world and i did and then and then kind of like that was one and then the next one and the next one 
and that's and then <laughs> it's kind of, you know so that's all that is i went for years of not being able to release stuff and just like just like working on music and music and being ah this isn't good enough this isn't good enough this isn't cool this isn't good enough and um and then even one time i i was working on this record and to get to get myself to finish it i um i, I was living by myself in this in this small apartment in hollywood to purposely get myself to finish it i didn't pay my water bill so and it was in like in the winter in la it's not that cold but it's still cold enough so that i'd have to take cold showers until i finished <laughs> this this record and it worked like i i literally i was like this sucks it's the worst thing ever and i finished but also i didn't realize that like when you call up like the day i mastered i called it i was like cool i'm ready turn it back on i didn't know that it was going to be like two or three weeks before they can come <laughs> out so i had to take and the irony is now i take cold showers like every morning just as like a way of life but um yes. that thing is a real real feeling and, I, and a lot of people i talked to a lot of people about it and yeah. you know um and and i'm always happy to talk to people about it because it's just like it's it, it's an issue that a lot of artists struggle with Ar- like musicians producers visual artists filmmakers like everybody that like man if you can if you can get if you can conquer that and you can just release stuff constantly and just get better i, I think it'll you know it, it, it says a lot it does a lot yeah yeah and it, it also shows that someone as i assume you've been doing your day job has been based in content creation and music for a while too so it's like it's not like you can't make music your day right. job is making music yeah but yeah. when it comes to like you you know your music the artist expression yeah you get it because it's this weird middle ground where you are right you can always make it better but part of getting better to the point where you can make the magnum opus that you ha- you know you're working towards the quality that you're working towards is you have to put stuff out and go through the whole process from a to z well that's that's like the catch 22 because it's like I, i'm when i see stuff on reddit you know in 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 the, um, some forums about people that are just starting producing or just starting making music especially electronic music they're like how do i get good as a producer and and i'm like well you just do literally got to yeah. show up you got to do it you got to do it every day and in the beginning 95 percent of what you write is not going to be good then the number's gonna it's gonna improve and then it's gonna be like oh 90 percent of what i'm doing is gonna, and then you're gonna get that number down but the only way that you're gonna do it is to just do it every day when you talk about releasing music that's kind of another thing too like the only way that you're gonna get over that you, is to yeah. actually put out music it's it's this weird kind of double-edged sword where you need to it's like if you wanted to become a runner get out and run, just do it just go run you know i mean that's that's kind of the the way it's like it's now we can make me- music in our bedrooms so we really don't have to spend any extra money than the money we invested in our daws and laptops and we could just experiment so i think man growing if i was growing up and in, in like today it would be it would be insane you know um because back in the day we'd have to go and and um you know rent a studio and and be some shitty studio in some guy, ponytail guy's basement it, it would just be like to get that idea out it was a different you know it was like money that that just to experiment and now it's like a kid coming up today on a laptop can like make better records than us all <laughs> you know um so yeah it's just you just gotta you gotta show up i guess and just and just make it you know i have to ask this because my brother would kill me um i, I want to ask a little bit about what your your as much as you're willing to share your secrets. Um, you know, I, I messaged Lauren once and he responded and said, I'll give you a couple of things. I resample everything to tape. And then he said he uh, records real reverbs. Like he'll print something, put it on like a shitty boom box, take that boom box to like, he said he took it, it was a picture he put of like some cell of like an old prison and then re-recorded it through a, a Zoom and then sam- you know, shit like that. Um, what can you give us without giving all your your secrets away I specifically carried to California and the swarm of bees walk us through like how you did the sound design your mastering chain some of the, the hardware units and so stuff just give us some something to geek out on that that song it's funny you mentioned that about taking kind of the well like there's like an, the reamping idea so we'll just call it reamping like like of like taking music and playing it outside of a of like a synthesizer direct into a computer um, through an, a preamp and through a compressor will have a completely different characteristic than if you played a synthesizer through an amp and mic different across the room. So it, it adds that real world space and stuff. I like to kind of mess with that. So I think that that tune was, was a little bit of that, like what you're describing, how he would do, um, 
especially the beginning was actually once I had kind of the structure of the song, I actually, um, I played the song and walked out into my living room um, with my iPhone. And then I hit record on the iPhone as the song played. And then I walked into my studio. And then so you can hear uh, in the beginning of that song, it sounds like the, it's, the proximity it sounds like the song getting close. Get so that's how that song begins. Yeah, yeah. It's like an iPhone um, recording. And then I just kind of drop that <laughs> in. So I do that. I do that all the time. Like I, I'm, I'm always just like right where I'm sitting right now. We'll take like an iPhone recording of the track and then for a breakdown or something i'll put that in and stuff so i love the idea of space and just kind of um putting things in their own space so the most interesting plugins to me are reverbs and plates and rooms that i don't have access to so um uh like there's some waves abbey road stuff that has some killer 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 plates in the chambers because i'll you know i, I probably never get to work in, in those in those rooms i mean you ne- never say never but but um so those are the kinds of things that i like to run a lot of stuff through because it just kind of creates a space for it the other thing too is just I, i'm really heavy-handed with compression where it's just like ridiculous ridiculous compression um so there's a lot of that a lot of slow like a lot of slow release um crazy crazy side chaining stuff mm-hmm. um a lot of like the kick will side chain stuff and then there'll be another ghost side chain on another compressor yeah so i there's so many so many compressors going on both hardware and software and then but but a lot of that a lot of that tune came from just kind of um uh, a baseline where most of my stuff kind of starts out i go over to that folder and it was a kind of a cool baseline that i added some drums and then there's a few soft synths on there and then um i took the soft synths out and put them over to the tape machine brought them back in and then um and then more processing and um yeah that's that's pretty much without having the session open that's that's as as pretty i well, can I'm, remember yeah rem- yeah but the ideas of of space it's great that you brought up that lorne example because because that's such a, it's such a great idea because it takes stuff out of the, co- the 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 context where it's at and gives everything its own space you know there's there's two ways i used to mix a lot of rock records and the whole emphasis there was was you put stuff in the same space to glue it together um yes um and for me now i actually like doing kind of the opposite where i like to have things exist in their own space and that's what i was gonna ask i get the feeling when i listen to that song in particular that in the end even though there's all these different characteristics to the reverbs Mm -hmm. and the textures Mm -hmm. it still all feels like in this same infinite space i don't know sure it doesn't it doesn't feel when i listen to it as like the spaces are conflicting as much as it sounds like when you're describing how you put the song together yeah i mean that's that's really thought out and kind of like yeah how do you do that how do you do that well i i kind of if if something first of all i really love um small reverbs so like a room reverb or short delays and i know that there's some elements that are going to have that like um so very seldom do like things have these enormous enormous reverb tails um it's more to me about the short reverbs and then uh, like some some frequency range will have slightly longer um reverb tails and stuff so i kind of make sure a lot of that has to do with with bussing the instruments in their groups and then kind of paying attention to them as groups so um so the drums are all bussed together and treated a certain way and against the bass and then and then i listen Mm -hmm. to the drums against the synth bus and then um so it's there's a lot of importance put together about not only the individual tracks but the buses as well and and how they fit into the grand scheme and then on the master you know um a bit of love is given to that just to make sure that's where i'll put you know either like dump at the tape or put some tape saturation plugins on to kind of glue everything there together a lot of the stuff i'm doing i'm kind of just shaving off a certain amount of high frequency information that kind of also tucks everything in and makes everything kind of seem like it belongs in the same place too that's actually one thing um uh i'll I'll speak blasphemy which is my only (laughs) My only dislike with some of Lauren's stuff is not that the songwriting, just sometimes the mixes are a little, at least to my hearing, harsh. Yeah. Um, like just like the high end and the mid. And you nailed that for me. That was one of the things I told my brother. I was like, I might, I might like this guy's, some of his mixing even more. And uh, we were arguing about it, right? 
<laughs> I was arguing for you. But that's my main critique. And I have moderate hearing loss. Probably I had mm. it before I even did music, but the mm-hmm. drumming didn't help. Right. And so sometimes I wonder, like, is it the way my ears have acclimated? And so certain things I suspect may sound harsh to me because I'm hearing them enough, enoughly different. Yeah. That, um, but you, and then there's another artist, Mad Zach, who's like really yeah. doles everything down. He pulls yeah. a lot of the high end off. Yeah, yeah. I like that. Like, I like that it being really warm and kind of dull yeah. on the high end. I don't know if it's because my, I think my hearing loss is a little, it's in the mid range. So I'm wondering like when I turn things up, the mid range is not coming up the same as the high end. And so then the high end bothers me. Interesting. Like, there's a lot of a lot of stuff in a lot of modern hip hop, like the hi hats, the trap hi hats. Yeah. Like I just try, I can't even handle it. Like it hurts my ears. <laughs> I'm like, get yeah. out of here. I don't yeah. want to hear that. Pull everything down on that, and maybe I didn't think of it as that will help with a lot of the different spaces because a lot of the information on conflicting maybe spaces mm-hmm. on on some of your instrument tracks, that's going to be a lot of it will be heard in the high end. The difference yeah. in the high end and your slap back and all that stuff. And if you filter that off and shave it down, yeah. And I could see how it's sort of without actually purposely putting them all in the same space. Yeah. They'll still feel like they're in the same space. Yeah. And then it's almost like it's almost like if I'm putting certain instruments in, in their own spaces, but then overall, if I'm kind of then again for the end, for the mix, for the final result, subtly putting everything in the same space again, yes. you know, through yeah. through a bunch of different ways to do that. Yeah, it's, it, it, you know, and I, and I don't know if it's a conscious decision as much as it's kind of like the way I just like to hear things, you know, um, mm-hmm. like, like, and also it could be that, you know, it's the end of the day and my ears are shot and I just, and I just kind of like always, you know, prefer to shave off that high end. I don't know. Um, but it's funny you mentioned the hi-hats because, because for like the longest time when I was trying to figure out, uh, wh- I, I don't use a lot of hi-hats really in, in, in my beats. Um, and, and like, <laughs> I and I don't really have a good answer for why I use them kind of as the song progresses to kind of give them energy. But like, if I'm making just like a little like Instagram clip or something like that of a beat I've been working on, um, I generally don't like. I'm not like okay now for the hi hats because I just think that like if there's ever a characteristic of of electronic music that'll like define it or put <laughs> it into a into a into a genre, it's 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 your where your kick drum lands and where your hi hats land and what they sound like. So it's kind of yeah. like it's kind of like i mean the different like to put trap hats on my stuff it'll all of a sudden like be witch house or something so it's kind of like it's i'm always resistant to put um to put hi hats on 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 stuff for no good reason other than i just you know oh yeah i didn't i didn't like it's not a very conscious decision but but there is that thing lingering in the back of my head that it that it easily defines whatever because you could take the same song and move the kick and it's it's a fucking techno song you know so it's kind of yeah yeah you know so i get it i I maybe i don't know if you do this consciously but what i like about your music and other people in the genre especially people who play around with modular synths mm-hmm. like anthony baldino oh yeah is they replace the hi-hat with just sounds yes. and like swooshes and like you you shave them and you mold them and they do what the hi-hat does they feel yeah. lightly fill in these in between spaces mm-hmm. and give it uh, you know maybe the groove is in the back pocket or maybe yeah. you want it to be push whatever it is that 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 in between your kick and your snare that's what the hi-hats are for but instead of using traditional hi-hat sounds yeah I, I see a lot of producers achieving the same goal, but with a wider sound palette. I've, I've tried to do that a lot too. Mm-hmm. It's like, how do I fix things and add this little, you know, headphone, head music, all the little tiny subtle things and changes yeah. that that keep things like flowing that are subconscious. Mm-hmm. Like the listener, if they're not if they're not a uh, music nerd, they're just listening to it. They just experience like, ah, oh, it feels like it's moving forward and it's progressing. Yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. just as a timekeeper, you know, as a timekeeper, but also you could take the same drum, you can take the same kick and snare pattern and you could put hi-hats on it or anything else keeping time and you can just shift that around. I mean, look at Dilla's stuff and then you could just, it'll just, the swing is totally different because of, mm-hmm. because of you, you just push the hi-hats back a little bit or, or I think that's great. But yeah, I, I actually use more stuff than hi hats, you know, maybe a loop and filter that and then just kind of have a yeah, little bit of noise. the mid range yeah. poking through. And that's kind of like our rhythm, you know. Um, but uh, yeah, the, uh, another thing I'll do, uh, which which I'll add to, to that conversation about the tune that you asked is um, a lot of times what I'll do is I'll take um, Ableton has a feature called uh, Extract Groove from Clip um, mm. and I'll take a beat. Like um, could be a beat I've made before, or or the beat I'm I'm working on, and I'll extract that groove, and then kind of quantize 
but not quantize quantize everything to that groove like my kick and snare pattern yeah so then so then it basically everything is adhering to that groove and it kind of like brings stuff together um Mm. so i'll do that a lot and and then also regarding the side chain, I'll act sometimes I'll side chain um, drums to other drums. So like if I have a loop, I'll side chain uh, the the kick to that loop so that the loop is ducking when the kick is coming in. But it's like a drum loop; it's not even a bass. So the <laughs> the amount of side chain compressors that are in a session of mine is just like it's just ridiculous. But like I don't know, I like to think I love the the power that comes from you know music that 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 feels that way, you know. <laughs> So that's, that's I've tr- I've played with that idea before. I I have tr- I've extracted grooves and then like okay, I want maybe a certain pad or a key thing to like chain like to side chain opposite in between this like the everything has to yeah. chain to the kick. Yeah. Like everything chains to the kick and ducks in it breathes the kicks there and then everything that was there now ducks because something else and I've used like a a dummy click put in some MIDI and then it's like quantize it to the groove yeah. that everything else is quantized to and it, it's worked. That's a yeah, that's a that's a I you I abuse that function all the time. Like I'll just take in beats I like. Yeah. Oh yeah. Extract the groove. Absolutely. Put in my own shit over. I'm like I'm just gonna steal that groove Dude, because that, one, like he can't get better. That group's fucking awesome. One hundred percent. Yeah. That 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 you just said is like I use that all the time. That's why I'll, I'll get I'll grab loops from everywhere. Like I'll grab loops from Splice or loops from that, and I won't necessarily be using the loop itself, but the groove. But the groove. Uh, yeah. I'll, yes. I'll, I'll, I'll steal yes. that groove. Yeah. Um. Dude, I use that all the time. I recommend people like that that trick to people because it's so rad. It's it's just like yeah, man. It's just like y- you get feels and stuff that you're not used to, you know. And it really mm-hmm. does tighten things up. It really it really yes. helps. It's great. And you can't even see it if you look sometimes at the DAW. You you look at it, you can't even see what it's doing. But it's because it's pulling stuff together so in such small increments. But it's great. Yes, perfect. Well. Now, I know we should talk about some video games because a lot of people that listen to this I wonder, podcast like video games. Do you ha- is, I wonder how much of your of your fan base like cared about the last hour of the stuff we just talked about. I don't know. I have had a – so when I started the podcast out, uh-huh. all I did was reach out to everyone that I was connected to through producing music through the years. Yeah. So I had a whole string of producers on, like the first 25-something episodes. Great. Yeah, it was so we. I talked a lot about music, so a lot of the people that, that it won't be too foreign to them. But okay. lately, I've been doing a a lot of video game podcasters, okay, other podcasters because yeah. Um, but I wanted to get back to I, yeah. Anyway, so it's a good cross section, though. Yeah, I, like I think so because mm-hmm. producers, a lot of producers game. Yeah, a yeah. lot of producers yeah. game, mm. and everyone in their goddamn dog listens to some type of music. <laughs> yeah, and, and I th- I think people are more in general. I get people reaching out to me a lot asking music questions. I think the cool. average person is more interested in how music is made than they were in the past. Yeah, uh, I think there's some of that going on. Mm-hmm. I think it's interesting to hear. I also like I'll listen to podcasts and I'll listen to people talk about hobbies that I'm not into, but I like listening to people who are genuinely into something talk about it because it's infectious. Sure, right? Like they're in, they're nerds about this shit. Yeah, and I like, you know, I don't know about it. Like I heard some shit, and now my I feel like maybe I know a little bit about that subject because I listen to two guys who were balls deep into it. Yeah, and um, like, and so I think some people might like it. I mean, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make your intro. I'm gonna work on your intro for Lou. I'm gonna build you up to be like this great god. From, oh man, you know, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but I'll, I'll put that? some clips. Wait, speak of, dude, what's that? Have you seen that Jeff Goldblum show on Disney Plus? That he just, it is like each episode is about something completely random. Like it's one about sneakers. It's other, like it's what we just said. Like you, I could watch Jeff Goldblum talk about goldfish for an hour. It's totally, it's totally cool. You know yeah. what I mean? But dude, he does. He talks about sneakers, and it's all about sneakers and stuff yeah anyway i saw yeah i should try that out i yeah. think i've seen the thumbnail it's so um, it's I'm, great because he's he's hilarious anyway yeah, he's a he's an og jurassic park with a life finds a way <laughs> Dude, with a, yeah. the line or whatever uh, yeah that's yeah. classic yeah, he's great classic line yeah. you when did what year were you born i know you're a little bit older than me I bet i'm in my 40s dude i was born in the 70s yeah 70s so so we're talking about have, video games. We're talking yeah, about. Yeah, are you? Did you grow up playing games, or did you get into I, them later? In so life? I, so like, I probably have the ex- the exact opposite from most of your guests, where I actually like all my video game usage was like cr- jam packed into like the first half of my life. Um, so 
I remember the Christmas that we got an Atari, like the uh, the Atari, the twenty six hundred. Um, That's what I was gonna guess. Damn it! Yeah, dude. The like like so. I don't like when you just said that. I don't know another Atari. Like that's that's just you know other than okay. like you know. So yeah. So the Atari yeah. twenty six hundred. We got that. I remember the exact Christmas we got that, and then now that. that that was such a huge deal for my sister and I. Like, man, it was, and um, and I think we had we had two. Well, we got a bunch of games with it, but one of the first games <laughs> it might have come with it was Adventure. You know that game? Let me look that up. So, uh, I'm my twenty six hundred knowledge is fairly lacking. Atari. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm thinking of a game, but I'm not sure if uh, what the picture I have in my head is correct. Adventure. Yes, this is it. I have seen this before. I've never yeah. played it. Yeah. I've just seen people talk about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it's um, yeah, we had that, and then we got all, like every classic game for that, and then um, so then it was um, in television for a second, and then um, ColecoVision with that. Coleco. They had, yeah, they had this crazy like controller that was like I can't, I don't know how we didn't describe it, but it was like this thing you put your hand into, and mm-hmm. and it I know was, exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, it's dude. some Blade Runner shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So there was that, and then ColecoVision. And then, and then I got into music. So I, so then the kind of the focus for me was on music for a few years. And my sister was always like kind of the video game person in the house, but I would still play all those old video games. And then Nintendo, the first Nintendo, the big, the big boy, the NES came around. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. then that was like, okay, I'm back again. And then, <laughs> man, so it's, it got you to come back. So when you were into music, were mm-hmm. you starting to play drums? Yeah, or yeah, it was guitar, drum. bass, it whatever. Was, it was drums. Playing drums, yeah, drums, drums. Yeah. So nice. I was, I was really, I spent a lot of my time just practicing drums, and then, but then um, the first Nintendo came out, and I was in, I think I was, I was, might have been in, uh, I, I was in junior high or something when that came out, or, or 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 late in grade school, and I remember going over this dude's house who had it, and we played Duck Hunt. That was the fir- that was the first Nintendo game I played, man, and then. I think then the following Christmas we got we got that we got that and then it was just I mean all those early Nintendo games my cousin had it too so we would always be trading games I'm trying to think what my favorites were um, Excite Bike probably that's that, a good one yeah that game ruled yeah. Tech Mobile that game Tech was Mobile. was killer um, so many of those Nintendo games that that era, that era of time that the first Nintendo system was was the the most time i probably spent playing video games um well, let's talk about that and connect it so did you was the did the chiptune music catch you or, did, or were you like into rock and because as a kid i thought video game music was cool but i was just in i was playing drums too uh-huh. and i was i like didn't take it as seriously mm-hmm. and didn't realize how good some of that music was yeah. now in hindsight i look back at Amazing. the composition i'm like dude yeah. they nailed it yeah, in dude, so many Super ways. Super Mario Brothers. Is that Kenji Kondo? Yeah. I think. Yeah, that that that. Um, at the time, I wasn't. I wasn't. Pro- I was probably like most kids, and I wasn't like, man, this music is phenomenal. Um, but it's. But there's something to be said that that you can play to three notes of the first three levels of or any of the first three levels of Super Mario Brothers, and I'll be able to na 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 like instantly yeah. tell you what that is. And um, yeah, so. No, it didn't have really. It didn't make me want to run out and buy synthesizers, but it's still with me today. So it had some effect. Like it, it definitely yeah. like um, some of the best music. And then, and then, like when Castlevania came out, like I remember the music for that just being rad, um, epic. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, yeah. To, I, I mean, hope- Castlevania is. It's sort of what metal b- became. It's the yeah. the riffing on classical themes and putting them on like metal BPMs. Yeah. And, yeah. I mean, it's all chip tune. Yeah, but there's a lot of. I mean, and then and then it's come full circle. And when I try to write like heavy metal riffs, like I'll steal from. I've been sampling MIDI. This is my new favorite mm-hmm. trick. Is I'll I'll download like a. Either the MIDI for like a, a game, mm-hmm. or you can go like find the Guitar Pro tab that has like drums, bass, and everything. If if the song has it, yeah. And then I'll download the MIDI, like for the song, and I'll organize all my songs into similar BPMs and keys. Uh-huh. So like, here's all a bunch of metal songs that I like that are in like D flat minor around 120 BPM. Cool. I have the MIDI, and I found I've extracted the MIDI for all those. I can throw them into the DAW. I can take this riff. I can inverse it. I can cool. reverse it. 
I can key change it. I can take the riff from here, from there, and then blah, blah, blah. Anyway, my point being is I, when I'm, I'll take Nintendo music for, me, like, for uh-huh. metal uh-huh. purposes. And yeah. I just think about it now. I'm like, that's what they did. They, it's just like a full circle. Dude, I know. When you listen to like, what's that band? Is it Baby Metal? <laughs> that they have, they like the, the, the chip tune breakdowns. Yes. It. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it does. It, it's like, it's like the same thing. Yeah. 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 yeah that, the, but I remember when the music just kept getting better and better. And then, um, and some of it was just so crude and, and primitive, but it was, you can re- remember it. And that's probably the most important thing that we remember what, yeah. you know, what that music re- sounds like still to this day, you know? Yeah. Is there a video game you can remember? Cause you were, you were growing up, you were into music, obviously. Is there a video game that you can remember that really stopped and you were, the music stood out enough where you thought, damn, like that's dope? Um, hmm. Man, that's a tough question because I think what happened was – I think what happened was as I was – as video games were getting great, <laughs> I just, just kind of stopped playing them for a while. Mm. Um, and that's when like – like all the great music kind of came in and um and just kind of took over so probably to answer your question is no but then i remembered hearing um there's a band i really like called health and um i guess they did yes they did max Payne three yeah yeah when i when i heard that that soundtrack stars yeah dude i was like wow yeah this is this is killer um so i think i think but there wasn't a defining moment that i that i was like that i was like wow this music is is great because i think it's only been recently and i could be wrong that 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 movie game producers and the people that make like that was a that was a decision that was a very conscious decision to have them do that game because they have a totally specific style so i think that probably Probably that probably there's probably more decisions being made um, these days with modern with modern um, music and modern video games that that to do more stuff like that. Um, and I think that I didn't probably catch any at, at the time, you know, mm. because I remember playing Grand Theft Auto and being and, and that's obviously a lot of like needle drop stuff. So I was like, oh, this yeah. is this is you know, this is cool. But I, no, I don't. I, I wish I did. I wish I remember like you know hearing I don't know like the the Metal Gear and being like, wow, this is the best music I've ever heard. But um, but I don't. I don't That's have a pretty that, good so soundtrack. I, yeah, it is. It is I mean, I'm obviously remembering it that it was, you know, that it was that it was great. But but like, you know, to, to one that was like, oh, I need to get this. I need to get this on CD or something like that. I don't think there was ever a moment like that. Mm. Unfortunately, what know? uh, have you worked on any video games? I know your TV and I stuff, haven't. but you I have, have, no, I haven't. I would uh, love to. <laughs> we gotta hook like, you up, bro. We gotta find someone to yeah, connect dude. you with somebody. Yeah, it's the whole thing is fascinating. One of my best friends works. Um, has worked in video games for years, um, and he uh, he does sound design for video games. So um, he, I, I always pick his brain because I'm so fascinated about about um, scoring for video games because it's um, it doesn't it just seems like there's scenes and then you need to make stuff that could loop and I, I like it's a whole world yes. that I know nothing about. It's a different world, but I'm depending very, on how very curious about. Ha- yeah, depending on how you want the. Uh- I guess the soundtrack to function, a, a common way what you were saying is like everything has to be able to like cut to something else seamlessly. Yeah. Depending yes. on like, yeah. like, okay, we want, we want the drop, the heavier part of this song to drop when the, uh, like the boss appears. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And tell them we want it to be the more ambient version and yeah. then it ramps up. And so like we have, but we don't know where, where, depending on how the player acts, we don't know when that drop's going to happen when they cross right. the scene trigger threshold. And so you have to like factor it. Okay, no, like these are the points in when, which the engine can switch, and you have to, yeah. you have to build, you have to build these seams, and yeah. in your sound, it's it's like a next, it's another level of like create like limitation that you have to build Dude, everything around. That then, what you just said though is so fascinating for me because yeah. it's like this like John Zorn game piece or something where or like you, you like the music is different every time. I love that idea. So like yeah. that that's what fascinates me about about game music, you know, when I talk to my friend because I I, I had this conversation with him like how do they like what, what you know, is it is it, it yeah, I had this exact same conversation, and it's fascinating to me. So I'm very curious about that world. Mm-hmm. I think a cool idea I've thought of, there's a game called uh, like like 
rhythm dancer or something. It's like a mm-hmm. music game, but it's obvious that there's music playing, mm-hmm. and the whole point of the game is to to match to the rhythm. I had this idea when we were talking about like hi hats and subliminal mm-hmm. things that happen like subconsciously in music. What if they made a game where, let's say, like we'll take the uh, BPM that you what what BPM is most of your music? Seventy five. 75 so like 150 mm-hmm. or yeah um so let's say 75 or 150 I, I, maybe 150 because you have more resolution in mm-hmm. like points but under the hood like the whole soundtrack is 150 and the actual the rhythm of the gameplay the way the frames and like when you jump it's subconsciously it's all on beat oh cool and so yeah. it, like gives it gives the game even like when you're playing it like a, a vibe like the yeah. whole thing it's built, I, I th- I've always thought that would be really cool if you could find like a sound designer and a programmer yeah. and the right dude, put that all together and like build a game where everything is, almost like you were saying with the groove, everything is side chained to the same groove, yeah. which gives the whole song that's awesome. this cohesiveness. Yeah. What if the whole game was side chained? I, I know. That's that's a, It'd be dude, dope. Yeah, that's amazing. Side chain everything. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I'd side chain my life dope. if I could. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, dude. That's, yeah. I mean, I think about what's happening. But- it's probably like also what I found out by talking to my friend is how long it takes to make a video game. And I'm like, Jesus Christ. Like I, I yeah, you know, like, like we as producers and musicians and artists, like, like it, maybe it takes us even on the longer side and takes us, let's say a year to make a record. Like I think about how long it takes people to make movies. And then I'm like, and then video games, like, mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm doing Tuesday. Never mind, like three years <laughs> from now. You know what I mean? Uh, it's, it's, it's insane to me. So I, I always have so much respect for people that work on video games. Cause I'm just like, man, that is the long haul. Um, but uh yeah it's 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 crazy but i i guess my point was was that with apps i think apps are probably a little easier to develop i don't i, I could be wrong but but to try st- stuff like this like ideas like that like with an app would be super cool you know like what you just said yeah what uh have you i think i it was either you or a guy i found from you called black moth or black yeah moth, i think yeah jack um yeah one of you posted a, a video of like your practice routine was to practice scoring to an him. existing movie. Yeah, that was him. Was yeah, him? He's been doing that. Yeah, yeah. Do you do that at all as like a creative exercise? Um, yes, I have in the past. I think it's a great idea. And I kind of like, man, um, almost every one of my Instagram posts is kind of like that creative exercise like that, of like, yeah. of like um, you know, in the beginning it was kind of, it was like, I'm going to just make, I like making these little, because I write every day. I just fire it up and work on an idea every day. And then, so one day last year, I just had this idea, just, oh, let me just kind of put some cool visuals to these and put this up. And then that kind of, you know, now here we are of, of doing that for a year and, and stuff. And But sometimes I'll start, I'll start with the visual on purpose and, um, and then write to that. I think it's a c- tremendous practice. I think, yeah. I think even people that aren't is, like interested in writing for pictures should do that because it's a different set of – it's a different set of like – it's 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 just a great skill set to have you know like like what 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 how does this music make me feel what is the what is the viewer uh, i mean how what does this picture make me feel how does the viewer how should they feel how can i make them feel opposite of what of what this thing is you know to take there's a happy yeah. scene but you're making this super dark music against it you know um i love that whole contrast when people there's that show it's that show the nick where it like takes place in um in uh i think it's like early century new york or and then but the music is like um super super uh futuristic uh like uh, I've never electronic heard of music. What's Man, it called? it's called the nick it's with um uh, clive owen and he's a doctor <gasps> in like 30s or 40s new york i think it might be in black and white too i'm not sure I, I don't remember but you would expect this period music where everything is like of that era but the music is um is uh, 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 Cliff Martinez who did Drive, and it's and it's oh, very the music like, is like super modern, man. It's a it's a really really yeah. really cool contrast. So I love that idea uh, on a on a side <laughs> a, a tangent, but I'm gonna watch this for sure, dude. It's great. He, it's that's, I don't know. He might have done. I don't know who did. I should look it up. But there's a game called a really awesome indie game mm-hmm. called Katana Zero. Cool. It made, it's a small studio, but its entire soundtrack is like. Well, that drive style like that oh, 80s synth rad. wave yeah yeah um and it's it's legitimately like i don't know who produced it i wouldn't mm-hmm. be surprised if it's the same guy when i heard it i'm like oh this this must be the, the dude who did drive yeah anyway if you like that maybe, maybe he might inspire yeah. you best 
Did, I might be able to get you back into gaming with the soundtrack. <laughs> yes. Didn't Lauren do a game? He did what? Shadows Fall or something? He did. Uh, he did a tr- few tracks for yeah. Fury, the indie uh-huh. game called Fury. Uh-huh. Um, and then there's an older one, but I remember him doing a post. Yeah. Saying I'm never going to work on a video game again because he was like super <laughs> frustrated have, with the. And the only reason I know that is because I have the vinyl because there was a vinyl release of that. Yes. Of that release, it's it's him and a, and a, and a video game composer, um, and they did like this split thing, and I have it. It's great. Yeah. What is it? He's done a few. Let me look at a video game. Oh, Killzone Shadowfall. That's probably what that, you're thinking that's of. it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm thinking of Fury, which was uh, a year late, three years later in right. 2016. He's yeah. done a few more that I didn't even know about. Yeah, uh, Sleeping Dogs. That's one of my favorite games. I oh, didn't cool, know he was cool. in that. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a. Uh... Have you ever met met or talked to him? I haven't. No, no. Yeah, no. You should because, yeah, I bet you go, you guys should collab. Yeah, man, Woo! that would be pretty. <laughs> that would be. There's a um. Yeah, I have this list of dream people, you know, that, that yeah, that would be outstanding. Yeah. My, my list of people is mostly vocalists, actually, that I would like, that I would like, you know, because at some point, at some point, uh, uh, I'm going to yes. want to put some vocals on what I'm doing as maybe just like a, I don't, not as like, I don't know if it's going to be a permanent thing or just kind of like a one-off record or, or, you know, singles or something like that. But at some Definitely, point, you know, please, you know, um, please and, do. and that is like, there's so many different types. Um, I work with just alone work with so many different singers of different types, but like, I can imagine, you know, like, like even rappers and stuff. There's, there's so many people that I think have such great creative vocal styles that I can't wait to do that. I just want to put out a full length, you know, first probably, but, um, and then, and then do something that, yeah, has a yeah, on it. yeah, yeah, but yeah. because I think that, I think that it's a different way of writing, um, if if I'm going to write something that I want someone to top line some vocals on, I I, I think I need to make a little bit more movement for them to kind of do their thing. Um, and that comes from me writing, you know, lyrics and top line for a lot of stuff. Um, I like to have a little more, you know, chord structure and stuff. And because I, for, for the, you know, most of my stuff, I, I don't care. I'll just hang on the same chord for, you know, three minutes. Um, but I'll, yeah. I think, I think I have, need to have a little more movement with that. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a really good idea. I've, I've talked to my brother about this that we wish that Lauren worked m- with more vocalists. Mm-hmm. His track, Acid Rain, is his biggest track. Yeah. And it, and it has like that. And it's not a pop. It's not like, it just has like, a, he does like, he does do uh, on Ice on the album with like the light, the mirror. I forget what that album is called. The uh, track's called Ice. Oh yeah. He does a few other tracks where he'll he'll sing and like kind of distort his own vocals. Sure. And kind of tell what he's saying. Yeah. Not, but like the mix of someone singing over. I would call you like ambient, mm-hmm. dark, or yeah. cinematic dark chill. Yeah, something like nah, that. I'll take it. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. Cool. yeah. Like putting a female vocalist over that. For me, I'm particularly a female vocalist for the same, most part. Same. Um, that's like a match made in heaven, and yeah. that's a that's an itch that very a scratch that a very few people itch, and when they do itch it, they don't itch it on a consistent basis. Yeah. yeah. So please, by all means, oh, dude, if I, you put I, a yeah. vocal record out, I will be there. I have, I have my, I have, a, I have, a, I have a list already. Like I've of, of vocalists that have just you know like going from order of like are you know are you fucking kidding me to to um easily obtainable but yeah yeah so yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> so yeah man who would be I, your dream vocalist who's your dream oh, if you could just man that's so hard that's so hard i would say there's a few like i couldn't put numbers on them but chelsea wolf um okay uh bjork woo woo um oh. beth gibbons from portishead uh pj harvey um there's a there's an artist. Um, her name is Karen Park. She's great too. Yeah, these these are not these are very ambitious choices. By the way, it's kind of you know. Um, so, but that's I oh. you know all of those all of those um, vocalists have have like such such like awesome amazing character in their voices and stuff. I've tracked you know through the through the six or seven years I've been making music professionally, I've tracked hundreds of female vocalists and I, and I would, and I, and, and there's like, and there's a few that really stand out. So like, and then let me go back and say like, stand out for this, for what I'm doing. You know, obviously there, yes. there, there, there's like so many amazing, talented vocalists that have such great voices, but like, I just can't hear them 
on over your music. Your, yeah, exactly, yes. exactly. Or yeah. at the same time, that could be great. Like that could be that could be totally cool mm-hmm. to have a really you know small um, voice, really sweet voice over over what I'm over the darkness. You know, exactly, like that could be awesome yeah. too. You know, I, I yeah, probably would lean more in that direction than I would than I would um, lean in the direction of of having some kind of like <laughs> loud, angry voice. Pow- you know, powerful singer. Yeah, yeah. exactly. I would. I mean, I yeah, I already told like I would be partial, like just as someone who's a fan of your music and just the genre, mm-hmm. whatever you want to call it, post genre, mm-hmm. post cinematic, chill, heavy, mm-hmm. <laughs> ambient sky. <laughs> yeah, level 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 seven tech romancer is how I refer to you with my brother. <laughs> the, uh, That's great. <laughs> the, uh, yeah, like I I'm partial to like what I hear in my head is mm-hmm. a, like soft ethereal female like she doesn't need to be it's like the yeah. juxtaposition sure. sounds awesome yeah I, saying yeah, I, some some like pure you listen to purity ring yeah yeah that would be cool yeah yeah her like she's yeah. a little poppy but her mm-hmm. lyrics are super weird too yeah and you have to like really think about them i think that would be kind of cool yeah yeah um yeah it's also the thing too that uh, I I want to do it right, and I want to do it in a creative way. So I don't I don't want to just slap a vocal on top of what I'm doing. Like yeah. I want to find yeah. a way to do it um, in a really really interesting way, and that and that's why I'm like okay when I'm ready to explore that, then I'll explore that uh, you know as a whole you know. And there's male uh, you know there's like male vocalists and rappers too that 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 like are, are you know that i that i like and and want you know like so it's it's all across the board but i want to make sure that i get to do it in a really creative way you know that, that that's special rather than just like oh here's you know snakes of russia with vocals you know um yeah and, yeah i have so. a way i'll give you i'll give you an idea that may be the perfect fit i think it's a genius idea cool. but i know i probably will never do it mm-hmm. even though i want to do it mm-hmm is I was thinking of a way if you wanted to have a vocalist as an electronic producer, mm-hmm. but you didn't want to pigeon your hole or brand yourself or be stuck with this, a certain person. Uh-huh. What you do is you create a character like the gorillas did. Oh yeah, that's great. But you yeah. create you create that character as like like I was thinking of like a Skynet and AI. Like you build some lore around that's it, cool. some branding around it, and yeah. it, what it is is a collaboration of every vocalist you right. work with, and then that leaves you. Also, room to combine, to glitch, to edit them, to do things that wouldn't be yeah. possible yeah. with like a real vocalist. Yeah, but still, like, be able to work and channel different vocalists all yeah. the time, and I you create it. like a buffer between. Yeah, because you don't want to like. Let's say you have a, a like one girl on, and she's awesome, and that 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 song does really really well, but she's not available, or you can't use her yeah, regularly yeah. or something. Yeah, but anyway, I love I a good about, concept. Like, yeah. yeah. Um. Well, I I I think that. It it will it will definitely the thing is too is that like for the last like the last couple bands I did I sang and I don't know if my like I don't know if I like my voice to sing on this kind of music you know um, yeah so it's like if 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 someone if I needed for some reason to to have a song done today with with a voice on it you know it would just by default I would do it but but I don't I, like I don't I don't like my I don't like my voice in particular and I definitely don't think I like it for this so it's kind of like and mm. I don't know if I you know. I'd rather just kind of be in the background, I guess, for that. And but I don't know if I would. I wouldn't necessarily add a vocalist, and they would be the vocalist. It would. I like the idea of of doing a record with twelve different vocalists. Like that's really exciting yes. to me. So that's that. Yeah. That's kind of the thing. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean that would be the, that would kind of be the approach, I think. And and it's also the other thing too is like. I've had a lot of people offer to sing on top of the songs that exist now, and it, it, it's it's kind of hard for me because I really didn't I didn't imagine them that way. I imagine mm. them in in a way to, to kind of exist as instrumentals. Um, has anyone just sent you like a, yes. a demo of them singing yes. over? And they've and been fucking it, great. They've been great. they've been good. They've been great. Yeah, like great. Um, and you got to share some of those with uh, me. Dude, Hook and, me up. And and I and I um. And and I'm just like, and I'm just, and my only hesitation is just trying to figure out where that fits in the in the overall picture. And um, yeah. because I don't, as much as I, I don't want to like, I don't want to like, um, 
like go against what I said before because I want people to interpret the music any way that they can. And if that means yes. them writing, like I'm, I'm first firm, I'm flattered, a, eh? and I'm, and I'm always stoked. But as far as like, it's just, it's just weird for me because I didn't write it in that way. It's kind of like, yeah, I know what you mean. I, I, um, I, 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 so if I, if I want to do that, I want to write stuff that's like, yes, I, I want there to be a voice on this. I want to leave room for the voice, let's just say. Yes. You know, and, and I think that the tracks I've made already, I certainly didn't leave room for a voice because I wasn't intending on it. But then again, I want to do it in a creative way. So I don't know if I need to leave room for the voice in a very traditional way. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, you could always, you could always build a song out. I'm just riffing off the top of my head, but. Mm-hmm fully as if it was an instrumental give it to someone to sing and then you can always pull elements away yeah out yeah to you know yeah kind of like at least have like hey if i want if i feel like it needs more i already have stuff that's already been pre-made to fit because it was yeah. made before i can put sure. it back in yeah yeah maybe that yeah. i'm a big fan of of taiko um Woo! yeah and and he the- he traditionally been instrumental and then I think it was last year, or the year before, he put out a record, the newest album. He yeah. put out a record with a, with a vocalist on it, and um, and it, it seemed like people were very either people, split on people it. People were not stoked on yeah, that. Yeah. A lot of people were not stoked. And and um, and I don't know how I felt about it because I'm so used to like the reason I love his music so much is because it was instrumental. Because I can kind of just like it was like because it, 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 it held that place in my head for me. Um, so I, I like I got the vocal record. I think it's great it, it, for what it is. Um, but I did appreciate when he put out he put out an instrumental version of that record. It wasn't just taking out the vocal track. Like he rearranged oh, the songs. I haven't listened for to that. it, dude. I didn't know he did that. And I like it better. I just like it better because that's just the way do. I like yeah. that. You know him, his music he makes. So. Um, yeah, it's, it was an interesting statement, though. So, um, huh? But yeah, yeah. But that is in the plan. That's in the plan. Um, hopefully, so Bjork, what? if you're if you're listening, um, <laughs> she's not. I can tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's about there's about twelve people listening. <laughs> that's great. Well, if any, if any um, of you twelve people know Bjork, yeah, yeah, that's great. But hopefully they do because she's a dude. That song, Yoga, or yeah. how you spell it, Hoga. Uh, uh-huh. To this day, if I want to feel emotional, if I want to get a tear going, bro, throw that on. Dude. Done. Yeah. She always... Yeah, it's happening. The, and the great thing about her is that she works with the dopest people every time. Like, every one of her records. Yes. She works with, like, Arca or the Hacks and Cloak or... or she's always working with, like, Matt Moe. She's always working with, like... She, she has her finger on the pulse. She always knows what's up. And, yes. and she's like, and that's, I respect her. She's even, always been like that. that. She's always been like that. Always, always. Her like whole she, career, she's yeah. been like that. Yeah. Exactly. So she's just, you know, it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah. So. Yeah. You know how else is like not the same as like, I don't love her, I guess, style. Because mm-hmm. it's like, she's kind of goes in a different direction. I want to pre-frame it. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I like Bjork better, but I've always thought Image and Heap was oh, like. yeah. Yeah. In yeah. Like, too good for this world. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. pe- people sleep. Like, I listen to her music sometimes, and I'm like, I can't believe one person can put this fucking shit together. I know. This is insane. It's, yeah. it's so, it's, it leans a little more in, like, the like the pop like, sure. direction, it's but it doesn't great, matter. Though. Like, yeah. it's so good. Yeah. I think the same about FKA, FKA Twigs. Um, yeah. She's another yes. one on my list. She, she's just, like, of another world. Yeah. It's, it's, it's crazy, man. Yeah. Let's wrap this up with kind of, I guess... Maybe go through some of the musicians, because a lot of the, our listeners are into music. Mm-hmm. Some of the bands and musicians that sort of pushed you on your path to doing music. You can just kind of mm-hmm. run through childhood and some of the big hitters and who they were and maybe how you channel some of that in your yeah. music today, if you connect that's, it. That's a great question. Um, I've always been a crazy, crazy fanatic about music. Um I think my f- I got my first record was Thriller by Michael Jackson, um, which is an awesome first record. And then um, in that top in that in those top ten records of my first record, also Prince Purple Rain was in that was in that thing. So those are like pretty killer ways to start, you know, plant the seed. Um, and then when I was in um, when I was starting to grow up. I was I got like into like hip hop, but it was like early hip hop. Like they had made these compilations of like really stupid hip hop songs. Um, 
and they were but they were great like they they and that led me to the beastie boys and then um and then i, I was at like a huge bc boys fan and then that went to metal that went to like and then i'm so thankful for metal because i think that what metal does to people (laughs) um is makes people music fans like makes you just fanatic about shit and and that's what metal did for me metal made me like really want to know everything about the bands and what the instruments they played and especially the drummers because i was a drummer at the time and then i and then that I was I was playing in metal bands and 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 bought metal records and loved that and then I just kind of like for some reason this was back in the day of record stores and there was one record store c- called the record store and um and I would go there and it was before you could hear any music before you bought it which is I, to most people is like absolutely frightening but um but I would literally like judge I, I would pick up a record and this this is a cool cover and then i flip it over and see what the band looked like and i'd be like <laughs> oh, oh like no shit and then i and and the first one i did that and bought was faith no more um which is like to roll the dice in the entire record store and to have that be the faith no more record is the record that i did that so then instantly that kind of changed the landscape for me um and then it was um so I and then through Faith No More, whatever T shirt that Michael Patton wore, <laughs> I just bought that. Rec- <laughs> I bought that record because I was like such a huge, ginormous Mike Patton fan. So then that for led those to- who don't know, he's kind of obscure. He's a Mr. Bungle guy. Yeah, lived yeah. For, and he's sort of like this underground icon. Yeah, oh, like yeah. an icon of underground. He's yeah. the icon of like art. I don't know how to explain it. Like a crazy rock star. I mean, yeah. he's like. But he's like the bodies. anti-rock star. But he's like, but he's like, yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, um, yeah. And that, and that was Primus was like the first band, and Mr. Bungle. So I, like, I went through that yeah. that phase, and then that kind of yeah. le- led me to records like um, Jane's Addiction and Smashing Pumpkins, and and then eventually Nine Inch Nails. And once I discovered Nine Inch Nails, that kind of really opened electronic music True. for me. Mm. Um, it's like pretty hate did that machine. for so many people. Yeah. He did that for so many people. Yeah. Yeah. And and that was the record. Like that's the record that made me buy a sampler. So, um and I bought and and then once that happened, I was just uh I was really um really like into anything that had any <laughs> like if there was a guy if I flipped over the record and it credited a guy with a sampler, I just bought that record. Um so but that was a lot of cool <laughs> bands at the time, like Cop Shoe Cop and 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 all these like really noisy like just awesome bands that, you know, um soul coughing. So it was this whole uh, like guy with a sampler band kind of thing that i that i was super into and then that led to just more electronic music and me discovering labels like warp and um moax and um and then i got into like 90s electronica and then and then i didn't listen to like anything with a guitar in it probably for for um a few years and then i heard um i heard the the refused record shape of punk to come and that just like was the just literally blew my head off that record and <laughs> that and, record is and that kind of brought me yeah. back to metal well not metal but just harder music and then i and then i just played in a bunch of um a bunch of heavier bands and uh first i played in i, I played in a band after i stopped playing drums i i played I, I started singing so i would i would i i played synth <laughs> and sang in a band and everyone thought we were fucking crazy because we didn't have any guitars um and then after that i just i just i just played um i played uh in in a bunch of like heavy rock bands and i sang and and then but the whole time i made electronic music with this you know with the same gear i I always had and and but i didn't i wouldn't put any of it out like it wasn't i couldn't i couldn't decide of of what it what it was going to be and that went on for years and years and years and years and then i kind of started helping other people make their records and then um and then that led to producing full time and kind of got me got us up to the point that we are now and um yeah and the, and I'm still just as crazy about music as I was when I was 14 like I I I aggressively aggressively search out new music you know like so yeah yeah, I, I, I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I could talk about this shit like all just all day. No, <laughs> music. that's what I want. <laughs> yeah, um, that's what I want. Yeah. You were the drummers you were into when you were oh, younger and oh, kind of got you rolling. 
Um, I, I, so many. So like, uh, Lars, like just by default, I think, um, Dave Lombardo, um, and but then I name was, the band for people who don't know say the band they play. Oh, okay, for, so okay. So Lars Metallica, Dave Lombardo from Slayer. Um, but then I was like, then I would I would I, I studied I studied with a lot of different teachers. So I, I I took the one thing that I think was a really valuable lesson from that was my drum teachers were always like, you should listen to all these other styles of music because you can bring that into your drumming. And I'm really mm. glad I did that because it made me. Then this happened sometime during that time of music that I just told ever, well, I told you about. So it kind of made me listen to shit that I otherwise wouldn't listen to for the drumming. But I'm so glad I did because it opened up my palate so fucking wide. And and so it was a lot of these like fusion guys like Dave Weckl and um, Woo, and Steve smoothest. Gad and yeah, Steve Gad is my one of my favorite of all time. And yeah, yeah. yeah dude. And 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 then I went to this school in new york called drummers collective and it was this small school that it was uncredited but the 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 teachers that would drop by for that i took that i took like lessons with are were just the world the best drummers in the world and i and i was able to take lessons with them so i was like that modern drummer drumming nerd kind of guy but then i played in metal band so it was this weird thing but then i remembered like this one teacher we were talking about we were talking about dream theater i think because that first record came out and i had it and and i and i went in for this lesson and i was like man he's like this drummer blah 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 and he let me talk for like five minutes about this drummer and then finally he said he's like man none of that shit matters (laughs) and then like he's kind of right because now if you ask me now who like my favorite drummer would be it's like john bonham or phil rudd from acdc like dudes that just just pocket like so just pocket yeah that's it so that's all that matters yeah that's it and then i think you need to get and and by no means am i am i there are guys with chops that are just amazing and it's so impressive to me and i think but like there's guys that have the chops and the pocket yeah when you have that it's like hell yeah that's it what's up so let's do this yeah 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 yeah. it's funny for me now that i that i that i have just completely circled back to to you know just that kind of drumming and stuff and just pocket and simple and like it's so like just taking kicks out of patterns because it's just like man having that space there is so much you know <laughs> i do that all the time yeah. when i like i'll reference beats like i'm going to steal this beat mm-hmm. kind of get the get the soul from it and i'm going to change it up yeah one of the first things i always do is i take out kicks yeah. that i feel are too like yeah overdone i'm like i don't need a kick there get it get it out of here yeah and like to yeah, take out reduce it yeah and take out like <laughs> take out the the other kick like the kick they take out the kick on the downbeat and leave the one that's you know right after it yes it's like yes yeah I, yes I, I think i think that and man and that like that space concept of of leaving space in your music you know like look listen, if you listen to reggae records and you and like the drumming and the bass playing on reggae records it's like man those guys just hung back like they understood yep. that like it's it's it, the less you play is is for some style of the music is is great and i think that like if you look at you know dub records and dub bass lines and stuff man it's they're so unbelievably simple but that's what makes them so great is it's like yep. it's, you know so yeah i you yeah, brought that, up uh go ahead uh no i hope that answered your question and kind of got us up oh, to speed on definitely on you know and you brought up i'm gonna probably bring i'm gonna ask about music more sure because music's the other mm-hmm. the other like there's been two things in my life that I've never got burnt out on. Mm-hmm. That's music and video games. Right, right. I, I've had like, you know, affairs with other hobbies, but those two, mm-hmm. those two are like my, you know, I'm a polygamist. I have two wives, music and video <laughs> games. Well, three. And yeah, my actual wife. Um, right. But uh, you brought up Refuse Shape, uh, Shape to Punk to Come. Uh-huh. And it's interesting because we both grew up drumming. This is, uh, drummers and pro- electronic music producers yep. are like peanut butter and jelly. Absolutely. It's like. Yeah. We grew up trying to record our own drums, which is a pain in the ass. <laughs> so you had to learn all this shit to record yeah. your own drums. And then you end up recording your friends and then blah, blah. And it just, then you inevitably get into electronic music. Um, Shape of Punk, you, they, you, they brought you back into it. Yeah. I came up listening. I was a little bit, I was born in 85. So mm-hmm. it was all rock music. And then I started getting into 90s electronica, specifically mm-hmm. Depeche Mode. Oh, yeah. Uh, Duran Duran. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's this group called Venus Hum. Mm-hmm. They're really obscure. No one seems to know them. Mm-hmm. Like a girl singer over mm-hmm. two guys that produce. But Shape of Punk to Come was like that really opened me up to like going full electronic. 
because they'd have these electronic oh. segments. Oh, that right there. And, yeah. they, and they were so dope. And I'm like, oh, it doesn't have to be like Depeche, like kind of pop. Like it could be yeah. electronic can be something different. Absolutely. And it, I, I grew up in America. All the European stuff was like, that's just your techno. It was all just techno. Right, right, right. It was European. Mm-hmm. And I was brainwashed into thinking it was all bullshit. So I never gave it, an, gave it any. Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's weird how that took me into electronic. Yeah. And the, but that record for you brought you back into. A louder like, music. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, dude. It, it's. But the way they fuse the two, like. Um, yes. it, it's kind of like a lot like. Like Radiohead, the OK Computer record. Yep. Because that's kind of like, I mean, that's a fucking masterpiece to me. Like, that band could have stopped making music after that, and that would have been fine. Like, no, I mean, and I don't say <laughs> that because I don't like the records after that. I'm saying that because that's like, that's their absolute, like, how are they going to top that? Like, it's just fantastic. I, uh, yeah, yeah. I like Hail to the Thief oh, almost dude, just as Don't much. get me wrong. Yeah, Kid A. I mean, it's all like, they're, they're, like, I'm, I'm kind of being super cheeky when I say that, but I say that okay, from the perspective yeah. of combining rock with a little bit of electronics. It's just fucking yeah. flawless. Yeah. So it is good. Yeah. I like his, uh, his, my, I'm actually, Again, our because how do you say this? Radiohead is one of those bands that's they're in the pat the pantheon now. Yeah, and people have very and it's like first you can't say they suck because you'd be laughed out of the room by <laughs> essentially everyone, rightfully so. Yeah, you could, but I like I've always been partial to his uh, solo album called Eraser or Eraser, oh yeah oh. Eraser. Yeah, that it's- to me is like the pinnacle. F- I mean, and it's not even a Radiohead thing. But yeah, people get mad at me, but that's my favorite. It's my favorite one. Yeah. The one, I think it's his latest solar record, but the one that has, it's a song called, um, it's like Morning Glow or something. It's his latest, it might be his latest record, but there's very few songs that I hear and I have to just listen again for three times. And I think that yeah. was the last time that that happened to me was I that, to look that up. Tom York solo. I think it was his last, it didn't come out that long ago. It only came out in the last two years or less. And it's something like, morning glow or something or or it's on morning morning bell no no that's that's it's 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 fantastic um i could be getting the name wrong i mean maybe we can yeah afterwards we'll put it in the show we'll we'll figure it out yeah yeah yeah, yeah, um, sounds interesting but yeah man uh yeah it's it's uh yeah but but it's funny how how the progression came to me to not like playing much video games because I just like, it went from a certain point where like the video games that I liked were like, like my favorite video games have always been, um, have always been like these side scrolling, wacky adventure games. And it's funny because you, you had mentioned about the musical upbringing, but the, the actual week that I got PlayStation, the first PlayStation, I got it as a gift from, it was a Christmas present from my girlfriend at the time. And then at the same year was the was the year I got all of the Beatles records on CD, like all of them, all the all the great ones, like all the latter ones, all the weirdish, <laughs> all, all all the acid ones. Um, so, uh, and it was the and it was also oh, <laughs> I, I had a week off from work, so that that week was the what I just sat there and I played video games with the sound down and listened to every Beatles record in a CD changer for a week straight. And that was like and that was so and the and the games that I always dug were like um crash like crash band these are going to be ridiculous to the hardcore gamers that are listening because they're just such ridiculous games. But like Crash Bandicoot, um Sonic the Hedgehog, I know that was Sega, but it was like those kind of games to me were like the coolest. So when 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 like uh, the first person shooters came and then like i just i just couldn't get into them so i struggled to find stuff but i recently went i went to i was in the target a little while ago and i just like ah, let me just go down the video game section and there was a bunch of stuff on sale so i bought god of war um and Woo! It, well it's funny dude because i being out of touch lately with video games I bought it and and I came home and I talked to my buddy that we talking about that works on video games. You didn't know what you were in for. I d- had no idea. And I go to him. I go. I go. I bought some game today called God of War. And him being a dick, he's like, he's like, oh, I never heard of it. Is it cool? <laughs> and, then, and then and then and then I went, dude. And he didn't stop me. I went on for ten minutes and he didn't stop me. And then he's like, dude, I'm just kidding. It's like it was like the most popular PlayStation game forever. 
and, of and all it, time. And yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm like, oh, you. So I've been playing that, dude, and I and I love it. Like that's my speed. I like the I like adventure. I like figuring shit out, and I like combat. But I don't want it to be from the fir- from like first person shooter. So like, yeah, I, I've, I'm happy that like I found. And again, this like all of your listeners are rolling their eyes at this conversation because I'm sure they played that game so many years ago. But but it's like I'm loving it. So it's kind of bringing me back in. So yeah, that's the kind of shit I like. I like that stuff. I like that what, might be. That might be. I've said this before. Yeah. It, it might be the greatest video game ever made today. Wow, that's a, in my opinion. Wow, that game is the reason. There's a reason that game has become what it's become, uh-huh. and it's only been out for like two, three years. Oh, it's that, not like it's okay. Oh, it's a it's a fairly new game. Okay, um, you got it for PS4, right? I did. Ten the bucks. PS4 one. Ten yeah, bucks. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, wait, did you get the new God of War no, or the I original, the original God of War one. re-release? Uh, the original. Was, oh, the original one. It was. Pa- it's like yeah. It's just called God of War. It's like. PlayStation Classics, and I'm assuming it's the first one. Yeah. Wait, does it, does it start out with like you chopping a tree? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, that's the newest one. That's the newest God of War. Oh, it is. They oh, like okay. re- they rebooted the series. Oh. So there's God of War, the original one that was on PS2, mm-hmm. and then now there's God of War, but the 2016. That's what PS4. I'm on. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That game is arguably the best video game made. Ever today. That's really good. That like, I. That it's I amazing. Come back. You picked. A, you <laughs> yeah. picked. You picked a great. In fact, it might be bad. When I played that game two years ago, it was fairly new over a Christmas break, and it ruined video games for me for like six <laughs> months. Every, every other game was like, "This is bullshit." Like, right? I've already been to the Celestial Kingdom. I don't like, dude. Nothing else. It. You, you know what it brought back for me? What feeling it brought back was. So I'm playing, and it's kind of like. It was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And then I get to that first boss, that troll. And then I'm like, and dude, it's like, I'm like 20 times in trying to beat this thing. Yeah. And then I'm like, oh, <laughs> this feeling again, this shit. Yeah. And then I'm like, and yeah. then, and then my girl's like, are you coming to bed? I'm like, nope, not until I beat this. Not, I'm not, yeah. I'm not. And, and it was that. And then like, and I'm like, I'm not going to go to YouTube and see how this shit's done. Cause I know it's up there. Cause I, you know, yes. um, and I, and, but I, I, it took me like 40 times, but I did it. And so, and, but getting back to that feeling, man, cause that was the feeling of like us growing up and like the save points and shit. And like, you know, yeah. keeping your Nintendo on for like a week because you didn't want to restart the game, you know? So yep. yeah, dude, it's, it's, yeah. yeah. So I'm happy that, that I picked a good one. I'm glad to have. I'm glad you're kind of growing back. God of War is yeah. a great way to come back into mm-hmm. gaming. It might ruin you for a little bit, but if you like kind of the old school side scroller stuff, uh-huh. except the, and, and you also maybe get inspired by some soundtracks. There's some indie games. Mm-hmm. The indie game scene that's like these small developers that are channeling the retro shit, but then they're they're retro styled, but they're modern in like quality of life sure. and speed and functionality. Yeah, um, that is the sweet spot for me. And there's great. this one. I'll, I'll send you a link after. Katana Zero. It's going to be like six bucks on PlayStation Network. Katana Zero, really cheap. Katana Zero. Okay, cool. Dark sci-fi Blade Runner. Love it. Uh, really addictive gameplay. The story is like it's one of those games. After I, I finished it, I was like on Reddit trying to like read what other people's interpretations <laughs> for, and like like ooh, trying to because like the lore and the story and the world. Anything sci-fi is going to I. I'm, if it's sci-fi, you probably got me sixty percent of the way there already. That's great. Just cool. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I could try to send you some shit that might, uh, uh, hopefully, not only will you enjoy, but maybe can um, give you some musical ideas too. Yeah, because I, it's like, man, I spend so much time here in the studio because it's like I'm very lucky to have my main thing that I love and my my hobby be what I do for a living. Be be it. There's so it's all intertwined. It's just it's some completely. Yes. So it's just like my default. Um, thing. There's always something to do in here. There's always some sound to make or some thing to explore. So it's kind of cool that for a little while now I've had this thing that it's it's kind of removed, you know, because it's usually like I'm in here or I just go for a walk, that, that like and walk yeah. my dog and I'm gone for like an hour. That's like those are like the only two things, especially now with quarantine and stuff. Like it's like so it's either that or that. So it's kind of cool that I have another thing and that I can save and kind of kind of um, you know work on and 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 try to beat and stuff. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, yeah, I'll send you. I'll send you some shit. Cool. Um, where can where can people find your stuff? Uh, uh, pretty much just snakesofrussia dot com leads to my Bandcamp, and then I'm on all the streaming services. Um, 
Yeah, and that's that's pretty much. I'm pretty active on Instagram. I post regularly. Um, and that's yeah. always a good way to you interact. You have a good one too. Yeah, but yeah, if good, anybody, good. you know, if any of these production questions caught anyone's interest, yeah, if anyone needs advice or anything like that, just please reach out. You know, it was like a post hardcore band that I used to listen to that had snakes of some. I was wondering if you like was it, got your was, name off this. Was, was it man? I was trying to. Think. Um, Fuck, what's their name? God damn it! Oh, oh, these arms are snakes. These arms are snakes. Yeah. Yes, great, awesome. I was band. wondering if that was a reference to. Them Ever or seen them live? Have you seen them live? I have not. Dude, the singer's like he's like he's like eighty pounds, soaking wet, like, and he just he's just he's a force of nature. That dude. Yeah, that was an awesome, awesome, awesome band. I have their records, um, but no, the the name comes from um, my my fiance. She was born in the Soviet Union, and she uh, came here when she was uh, came to America when she was very young, and she and she got really sick along the way, and she had this dream, this like fever dream that she was being attacked by snakes, and um and she and it uh. really fucked her up, and she and she woke up, she told her mother and grandmother. So somehow when she told me that story, I was like, oh, you're being attacked by all the snakes of Russia. And then, boom, you know, that's, 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 that's a That's also a perfect name because when I, so my brother sends me a link, uh-huh. and it, like it has your picture where it's like the hood and the beard, <laughs> right? I'm like, okay. It's like a metal head yeah. and it says snakes of Russia, but my brother doesn't listen to metal. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, this is like, I think I know what this is going to end up being because Americans view Russia as like cold and heart, yeah. hard nose, yeah. like. Badasses, sav- all of them are savages. They all wrestle bears, and they're all like, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and so I just, it was, I think it's, uh, it, it has all the right tones to me that fit your name. Cool. Started, yeah. It's that fit your music. When I started listening, I'm like, okay, this works. But yeah, I did think these arms were snakes. You probably listened to metal. Yeah. Um, well, you listen to a band called Poison the Well. Oh yeah, yeah, man, yeah. Poison the Well to me, live, I've never seen anyone that had more energy on like. Like yeah. I'd never seen anyone that rocked that hard. Yeah, they I don't were even great. Live. Yeah, they were yeah. so good. Yeah, um, yeah. That that whole era of music, you know. And I still enjoy seeing bands like that. Like every time I die, it's one of my favorite bands. Very mm-hmm. um, good. So, but it, it, as far as the metal thing, like it's it's interesting because um, I have a lot of like metal, and I'm saying I'll use metal in capital letters with with horns around it, like they reach out to me and they kind of dig what I'm doing. And, um, and it's really cool to me because it's like, if you think about how someone that like a lot, a lot like it's two ends of the spectrum, but I'm, I'm channeling, I think so much from like, um, I'm just basically trying lately to make like doom metal with synthesizers, which is sounds to me like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But, but, um, I'm just kind of up for this challenge where I'm just trying to make, the same kind of mood that you get when you listen to like a sun record or not so much that because there's no beats but like you know just a dark slow metal record but then have it kind of presented with a different palette of sounds you know that's kind of a big thing i'm trying to do so you know it's working cool That's, that's great to hear man that's cool yeah 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 sweet man well i appreciate your time it's already 519s vote means we're like over two hours i think Dude, i'm trying to yeah. stick, stick to two hours yeah but anytime you're willing to hop on the podcast yeah, man. Again, we'll do it again. i will <laughs> take it anytime <laughs> they will talk about video anytime. games but, but hopefully next time i'll have I'll, I'll like be this i'll have played eight, 80 video games since we talked last and all we'll talk about <laughs> no don't games. worry about that I'm, yeah. I, I'm actually this is like the fourth or fifth where i when i started the podcast i almost called it media memories instead of gaming memories uh-huh. and my idea was to interview people and just talk about the different types of media awesome. that Im- impacts. So I wanted to focus on artists and then ask about the art that led them to be artists, yeah. like the art that grew up, you yeah. know. Yeah. But it was like the conversations were already going like four hours when I started. <laughs> and I'm like, just on video games. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, I can't. If I open it up, it'll be almost like it's like print, it's like printing the tape. Like I, I had to cut it off. Right. But. Um, yeah. I want to bring it. I'm gonna like. I might just open it up when I bring up a guest who maybe hasn't gamed a lot. Like, right. look, everyone's watched movies. Everyone watched, yeah. listens to music. Like, let's kind of go through the different styles of different art mediums that impact yeah. you growing yeah. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone has nostalgia, and everyone oh, yeah. can find new shit. Yeah. Yeah. that they like. Yeah, yeah, cool. So don't worry about it. I don't. I think I would be. I would actually be not surprised. If people reached out to me and said this is one of their favorite episodes, oh cool! Because it, yeah, let's hope so. Steered, it steered off, awesome. Steered off the uh, the realm. Awesome. But again, appreciate your time. Snakes of Russia, check them out. I will put a. I'm going to put some clips of your music cool. 
in the intro, but I'm going to and I also warn this in the intro. My podcast host only lets me upload 100 megabytes. So I have to downsample shit. Cool. Pretty aggressively. Yeah. So it's not going to sound as dope yeah. in the intro. Yeah. But uh just so I get that yeah. I I will do my best to try to get the file size. I'm allowed 100 megabytes, but this went 2 hours, so Right. I'm yeah. going to have to cut that down to like 96k yeah. or something. Do so the can. intro Yeah. I'll do I'll do what I can. Yeah. Check him out. Don't judge it off the music that's in the intro. Also, the last thing I wanted to ask mm-hmm. is, are you doing your own visuals or are you just finding stuff that fits the vibe when you're posting stuff on Instagram? Um, a little bit of both. I, I um, Like I do with music, uh, I'm always scouring for, for like um, – there's so, so many public domain. Like there's a place called the uh, Prelinger Archive that's just uh, – it's like public domain footage, hundreds and thousands of hours worth of, of public domain footage. So it's like a combination of that. It's a combination of just other stock footage sites. And then I just mess with it. You know, it's almost like saturated, like sampling, you know, like you take okay. is it like a break and you, and you fuck with the break. So it's like that. But then there's stuff I've shot myself. Um, ideally, I would love to shoot more stuff myself, but that's a whole nother skill set that, you know, I have to learn and, and stuff. Um, when you mess with it, what are you messing with it in? Premiere? No. All iPhone apps. <laughs> I, I own, really like I ha- yeah I have Premiere and I have After Effects um, I have the Adobe Suite but man most of it is like there's two iPhone apps one's called Video Leap that I put everything together and the other one's called um, uh, Hyperspective and yeah it's those two it's all it all kind of stays in my iPhone it's nuts wow. but um, that's like when, that I, is cool. when somebody <laughs> when I need to put something from there like on a bigger format I'm like oh um, so yeah I'm, uh, but I'm learning After Effects because I, I'm, the visuals are such a huge part of what I do. Yeah. Yeah, I think the direction, especially in the sort of darker end, I see – I've had a guy I mentioned already, Levitate. He's awesome. Check him out. He's cool. a little bit like more stuff that can also club out to, but yeah. it's very cinematic. Cool. He, he said a great line to me. He's like, look, I would love to get up there and just do Blade Runner shit, <laughs> but people can't get down to Blade Runner in the club, so I have to like – you know, right. I gotta play. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's great. He's, so, he's in a similar headspace. Right. He, cool. he likes and yeah. Um, but what was it? now? What was I talking? About? Oh, he merged. He's now gone from saying I'm an audio artist. Now he's he's branded himself around an audio visual, and he's like, I'm doing all my visuals now too. And he started That's getting great. into Cinema 4D, and now now all of his tracks are released with the own custom 3D shit. That he's done. Wow, that's cool. And I cool. think I think you're heading in the right direction. I think that is the future of like yeah. a creative artist. Yeah. Is you ne- because the barriers to entry and the tools for creativity, like you said with these iPhone apps. Yeah. You now can like Insane. put stuff together and actually put. You don't. You can, it can be done with the technologies getting better. You yeah. can have a. a yeah, I think you, I think that's the right move. I think you're heading in the right direction. Yeah, I, I know it's just a matter of like a, a long weekend where I just go and dive head first and I really, really learn the Adobe Suite. So yeah, it's but it's definitely yeah. my goal is to is to do more Sweet. visual stuff. Yeah. All right, I won't keep you any longer. I, I yeah, I'll, uh, appreciate the time. Awesome, man. I'll check you out later. Very cool. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna stop recording and then we can chat real quick about just getting the stuff sent over. Cool. So, three, two, one. Bye bye. See you.